Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals, which I have prospected from across the United States and other countries, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space, capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. I encourage you to watch my videos on geology and rock and mineral prospecting and get out there in the field yourself and prospect for those beautiful rocks and minerals. You can support my channel on Patreon. On Patreon, sim simply type in my name, Frank Riser M period S period, and I appreciate your financial support. Your contributions allow me to buy more materials to bring you more fascinating science demonstrations. Today's demonstration is on biology. We'll be looking at the meat-eating plants, part one. The carnivorous plants, the sundew, the Venus flytrap, and the pitcher plant. Let's get to the demonstration. The pitcher plant, the Venus flytrap, and the sundew. I bought this as a kit called Meat Eating Experiment Lab from Scientifics Direct. Scientifics Direct is a company that sells unique and interesting scientific gadgets. I encourage you to look them up on Google and type in Scientific Direct, Scientifics Direct and see what kind of products they have. I've already prepared the soil in these biospheres. It consists of nutrient-poor, mineral-poor peat moss and soil. I do it by placing this disc of soil, dehydrated soil, in the biosphere. I then add deionized water or distilled water into the biosphere. After some time, the soil absorbs the water and can be smoothed out to a nice, even soil. Nutrient poor, mineral poor soil. The reason why I'm using nutrient poor and mineral poor soil is because the carnivorous plants get their extra energy from ingesting insects. So they thrive in nutrient poor soils. The Venus flytrap, for example, is found in the coastal regions of North and South Carolina. The other pitcher plants and sundews are found in other continents across the entire world, of which there are over 600 different species of carnivorous plants. These plants, once planted, which is what we're going to be doing in this video, take a month to grow. Part two of the video, me eating plants, will be me feeding the carnivorous plants meat. Insects. I don't have insects readily available to feed them, but I can feed them using some pre-cooked hamburger meat. So let's get to the planting. For the pitcher plant, I have a nutrient disc. I have to stratify the preparation first. I stratify the pitcher plant in a sealed bag, a Ziploc bag, by introducing the small growth soil.
Next, I open up the seed package. And I have the seeds. Next, I introduce the seeds into the sealable bag. Into the sealable bag, I will add a teaspoon worth of water. And that is enough. Maybe a little bit more. I now Ziploc the bag shut so it's airtight. I massage the contents. I refrigerate it for seven weeks and then plant the seedlings. Next we'll do the Venus flytrap. The seeds are very small. These will be small plants. They photosynthesize to produce glucose, their main source of energy and they eat insects to supplement their dietary requirements because they live in nutrient-poor environments. I mix or aerate the soil, which I have already done, and I added the ionized water. I push down the growing medium and smooth it out, which I have done. I spread seeds on the surface of the soil so that they are one eighth of an inch deep and apart from each other. and I'm finished. Next, I plant the sundew seeds. These seeds are very small. I spread the seeds on top of the soil a half an inch apart. I place the biosphere in sunlight at 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The growth time takes this. The sundew germinates in one to four weeks. The Venus flytrap in one to three months. The pitcher plant in one to two months. And then I cover the tops of the biosphere in order to pre prevent 
desiccation. I will now add water to the biospheres. I pour the water on one side of the biosphere only. And I add copious amounts of water, but not so in pools. This water will be absorbed upwards in the peat moss and moisten the cell, moisten the seeds. The seeds are now ready to be placed in the sun, except the pitcher plant needs to be placed in the refrigerator first and then planted into the biosphere. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, always reminding you in order to find those beautiful rocks and minerals that you only need to do one thing, and that is to keep looking down.